people. But I won't stop now. But I won't Come on. Stop it ain't gonna never stop, y'all. Mark, uh, this 
Yeah, I would think so. I mean, they appear to be at opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of talent. But nothing's ever a sure thing, Kevin. That's why we play the game. I like it. Good. Smith gets the ball well pulled. And unable there to get the go-ahead bucket. And now Doris Burke has an update from the sideline. Well, Kevin McHale had a few moments ago. A lot of his focus in preparing his team for this game centered around how they plan to deal with point guard Brandon Jennings. He said Jennings is a blur out there. He's so fast, and he plays with a relentless energy. It's a challenge for any team to really keep up with it. Kevin will see if they can do it. finishing at the rim, some of that because of his size, not really a physically imposing guy. Developing that floater and learning to avoid NBA shot blockers is something that he has to continue to develop. There's the triple, and Rodney Stuckey the bucket on the assist by Bynum. He had a whole lot of space to get that shot. Yeah, I don't think the defender did a good job there of getting over the top of the screen. And as it goes out of bounds, Houston able to keep the ball. All right, a chance to check out some stats for James Harden. Great year for him last year. Kept in scoring, seventh in steals, and he was very solid from the foul line, closing out the year among the top 20 in terms of free throw percentage. And see, he was definitely one of the most reliable efficient scorers in the NBA. I mean, his top five ranking put him right there in the ranks of the elite scorer. But that is the effort they're going to need for the rest of this game. And not just on the offensive glass, but the ball over the floor. Well, it certainly had to make it to a great score. Harden versus his old team. The Rockets coming back with a big game five win. If they could get game six, they'd be able to force that final seven game and maybe pull off the upset. But it wasn't meant to be. Nobody responds to end of game pressure like this guy. That's what comes to mind immediately for me. He's had some monumental shots in his career. And some guys just embrace the moment at the end of the game. That's him. Steven has to be said here that he operates the pick and roll to perfection. I mean, he delights in running unwitting defenders or blindside picking guys so that he can end up rolling into a basket. Well, going back to the Rockets in the postseason, a lot of people have them picked to get steamrolled. Steve, they put up the side fight and really turned some heads with how they played. Well, the easy answer was because of the Westbrook injury. Uh, that's how Houston was able to, to really uh, take Oklahoma City deep into that series. But I think there's more to it than that. The Rockets have tremendous offensive firepower. I think they're gaining momentum as a franchise. And heading into this year, you know, I think they're one of the scariest teams in, in the conference. Brooks on the double team. Put him up in the air with the pump fake and then took advantage. I like the way they're working the ball inside because when you do that, you get higher percentage shots, and typically good things happen. Nice shot by Smith. They have repeatedly probed inside in the first half, guys. This pay dividend. Yeah, it sure has, but you know, with as many points as. All right, his first quarter of play, we've seen plenty of offense so far. Houston on top, up by three. And we'll be back shortly for the start of the second quarter. Welcome back, folks. We have a close game here at the start of the second quarter of play. The guys for the Rockets, what jumps out to you from a number standpoint? They've done a nice job on the offensive boards here, guys, and I think that was the difference in that first quarter, really pounding the offensive glass. Well, they set the tone early with their mindset, their tenacity, and their hustle. I mean, that's the way they come out, and it's um, served them well. 
Johnny Innes out there with Greg Smith. And then it's Garcia. Then there's Ronnie Brewer. And it's Brooks at the point guard position. Stetson's on the floor for the Rockets. Brewer's shot is off. Drummond was really playing extremely well during his rookie year and all of a sudden showing the promise that the scouts saw in him early and then he had the back injury and that really put a speed bump in his progress. Jennings. Monroe dishes to Drummond and so he draws the foul on the shot on a trip to the line to shoot two. Yeah, the referee's all over that one. No doubt about it. Clearly a foul. Nothing to argue about there. Going back to Drummond, the Pistons training staff had found going into last season that despite his incredible athleticism, he did have some imbalances strength-wise. That's something that uh, often happens when a player comes out of college and gets to the NBA very sophisticated training staff. And, uh, they find ways that players can improve athletically and strength-wise. That's kind of scary when you're talking about Andre Drummond, I mean, as if he's not already athletic and strong enough. A chance here to catch up with the fourth member of our crew, Doris. Oh, damn. Hi, Doris. Hello. Well, guys, for Dwight Howard, a perfect fit with head coach Kevin McHale. So often, head coaches are former point guards, but in McHale's almost full of fame power forward. Howard has a coach he can quite literally be eye to eye with. And McHale is one of the all time great post up scorers. And for Dwight Howard, he said that was the biggest reason for his decision to come to Houston. Quote, I felt he could really help me develop in the post. Guys, back to you. Don't see many great back to the basket big man these days. He's one of the best, certainly. Mitchell passes to the retro. There's the feed to Stucky. Barry's the long range jumper. Stucky's got six points. The defenders need to talk to each other. The communication lacking there on that three point. Uh, you know, if you're in a fight to get into the playoffs out west like the Rockets were last season, you have to make sure you get every win you can when you play against the Eastern Conference. Their success against the Eastern Conference is a big part of how they squeeze that eighth seed. Looked to me like the defender didn't get squared up and get his feet set. Good work by the officials. Nice call. That play can be tough to judge. Brooks gets the boot. Here's Monty Eunice. He's in there with about an inch of room around him. And he has got his first two points of the night. You see the defense get caught standing around that time, giving up an easy second chance bucket. Simply need more of an effort on the boards there, Steve. Bynum, this is to your right foot. Back to Bynum. Rebound goes for the Rockets. So Clark, you talked about the Rockets Hello. against the East, a record of 21 and 9 against the conference. And Stevens, one of the better marks in the West. Yeah, it was the same win total as the Clippers and Thunder, who both won their divisions. So all of the scores and distance get better in that regard. And the Rockets were full of scoring potential, and they just happened to catch teams in the East off the Arlo. Stucky up top. And the shot no good, a bit short. You know why he was open there. They didn't commit too much defense to him, and you can see why. He has trouble making that shot. Brooks with it. He hasn't scored yet, and I'm sure will change. Fire from the wing. Poor shot is off. He has no fear, guys. He is more than willing to mix it up in the paint with the big boys. Stucky passes to Bynum. Here's your rep go. It's good as Bynum with the assist. Your red coach got himself going there. His first points of the game on the three ball. Brooks kicks to Brew. Passes it to Monty Eunice. The dish to Brew. Bynum pulls it down. It has not been an easy quarter for him, at least offensively speaking. And there's the foul. It goes on to Francisco Garcia. That is his first foul of the game. Houston, a whole new five on the floor. And now the first time I've called here for Detroit. This game coming on the heels of the win against the Kings. Well, they benefited from some very loose play from their opponents. 
Sacramento that night part. Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, there were a lot of turnovers in that game. Some were caused by their good defensive play, but some were just terrible. First in rebounding, second in field goal percentage. One too many players better than him when it came to the team. Oh, shit. He's in the top five in the league in block shots. You see, let's go back to his number one ranking in rebounding. In the top rebounding, that tells you just how good he was at not only rebounding, but he had to get in position, reading and reacting to missed shots. Well, guys, it was a tremendous all-star season for James Harden a year ago. LeBron James declared Harden a superstar. No small praise for probably the best player in the world right now. And I think people are coming around to accepting that Harden really is a superstar player. And for Harden, signing a five-year, $80 million extension with the Rockets last season, the Thunder felt they just couldn't afford to pay him that much with the luxury tax penalties looming in. Well, they already had max players in the Westbrook and Durant, so we didn't feel going forward that they have three that chance. If Harden moves on to Houston, turned out to be an excellent move for the Rockets. He played awfully well last year. From the sideline, let's catch up with Doris Cook. Guys, Dominic's centers often take a pounding with intentional fouls. Like Howard admits that for a long time, he gets frustrated when he didn't get the calls from the officials. And from 2010 to 2011, When I allow those petty things to get to me, it affects my teammates and we lose the game. I've got to do a better job of keeping my composure to affect the game and not let the game affect me. Guys, he's made strides, but he's got to continue to put that perspective into action. Well, it's interesting how that mental discipline and training can help him tonight as much as the physical side. Thank you. There's a four-second difference in the shot clock of the game clock. Jennings off a bit from drum. And Brandon Jennings with the three. Jennings has got five points in the quarter. Boy, after having a tough time in the first, he's managed to turn it around nicely this quarter. Uh, out of bounds, okay. Detroit takes possession. Drummond with it. He picked up 15 points in the last one against the Kings in Sacramento. That's a two from Smith. And yes, a nice assist from Billups. Now just a three-point Houston lead. And the first half in. And now the start of the second half. Neither side jumping out ahead for the first two quarters. One of the problems for the Pistons last season was they always seemed to come out after halftime flat. Just couldn't sustain the kind of intensity and focus needed to win consistently. That was a big part of why they had such a tough year. And Detroit, looking at who they been. Josh Smith and Greg Monroe at three and four. All go both out there with Jeff. And it's Drummond in at the box. Three from Hutton. And good. Harden's got 10 points in the game. Now going back to the Pistons, the third quarter for them was by far the worst scoring quarter. Several points lower than any other quarter they played in, and with the sample size you get over the course of the season, that is no action. Well, you know what you think about now with a team like this is that if it's young, maybe they're not used to the tweets. Come on, Josh. Other teams are making happen over the outside break. This is uh, an area for improvement for this Detroit team. Parsons fires for three. Lynn misses to Alfred. And he uses both hands to jam it in. Taking it to the rack with power right there. And hammering down with a two-handed slam. Well, they already have him staggered, and now all of a sudden they're throwing some aiming. Caldwell Poe passes to Smith. Defended by Parsons. From outside the arc. Smith kicks to Drummond. Pass to Caldwell Pope. 
And a hits there on the triple. Wow. And they've been off target now on three of the first four shots they've taken in this second half. Well, Contavia is called Will Pope. I guess you could call it KCP. 6'6 six, six shooting guard out of Georgia. One of those guys that stat heads love because he has that rare combination of being a great three-point shooter and a great free throw shooter. Dribble from Harden. Oh! A rebound by Brandon Jennings. Well, that's a warm-up jumper there. I mean, when you're a pro, you can't make excuses for missing that. All well pro pass to Jennings. Oh! Here's Smith. Come on! One was on the shot with two free throws for the contact right there. Well, he's a fearsome defensive presence in the paint. A shot blocking machine. And intensity, the effort that he brings night in and night out. He's such a huge asset for his team. You know, Steve, something else that jumps out at me about him is how often he thwarts penetration with his active hands. He gets a lot of his skills as players try to make their way to the basket. Mitchell, he's just in for Andre Drummond. Go back to Caldwell Pope. Not just a shooter, he can defend the first two steals a game, five times a game, seven rebounds a contest to Georgia. Kevin certainly has the athleticism to impact the game with his quickness and jumping ability. The question can be, will be rather, can he develop his ball handling and take advantage of the athleticism offensively? It's back to Jen. <laughs> oh, three pointers right on target. Jennings has got his third basket of the night right there. That is not enough coverage. He's got to do better than that defensively. Basically, no coverage. I mean, defense did not look very good there. Howard, five and ten. Good on the shot. Howard's got four points in the quarter. He's created some good opportunities for himself and made the most of them. Outside Jennings. Feeds it to Monroe. Takes it off the glass. Monroe's got six. The Houston's gone one or two from beyond the arc since coming on the break. Tell you what, you got to give the Houston Rockets a lot of credit, guys. After losing their friends, oh my God. An injury and age back in the they managed to rebuild this team without taking the lottery picks or going all the way to the bottom of the heap. Very impressive. Houston making a switch. Federal, it is just the hard Person's on the wing. Howard up on top. And there's the pass to Beverly. Six to shoot. Back to Howard. And that pass is going to count, folks. Gets the goal to the goal right there. He thought he had that one clean, but the ref saw it differently. They'll count the basket. Pistons trailed by three. Minute 42 left here on the third quarter. Double by Howard. And Monroe picks to Smith. Picks it out to Jennings. Just trying to shoot. Monroe with it. Now guarded by Caster. Smith for three. That one goes. Count it. Smith's got nine points now in just the second half. And for the Rockets, they've been very shrewd acquiring undervalued players. Trading for draft picks. Steve all in the hopes of swinging big trades for superstars. Well, then when they acquired James Harden, they finally got a cornerstone player. Now all of a sudden you throw in Dwight Howard, he's got another foundational player. So all these years of, of tinkering and trading and moving picks and moving players, it's finally paid off, and now he's got the team he was hoping to put together. For the Pistons, Andre Drummond comes in for Mitchell, and Chauncey Gillis is subbed in for Caldwell Pope. Here's Monroe. He's got six. He dishes it to Jennings. He passes to Drummond. Gets back to Jennings. Nice ball from the bottom Troy. And there's the call on help. That's his first pop. He had not established position. You know, I prefer the rest to whistle with a block when in doubt. I thought that was a good call there. Your red coach checked in for Detroit. Kyle Ziegler comes in for Jack Smith. Jennings passes to Drummond. Shot clock at six. On the wing, Ziegler. 
Phillips, guarded by Hart. Phillips, no good. You gotta like what they've been doing down there in the low post part. I do, I love it. Their rebounding has been outstanding. So important in a tight game. From T. Hart. Yeah. Stolen by Phillips. And now the Pistons, fast break. Tipped. Singler outside. Takes it to Eureka. That's right, Jennings. The good looking shot from the wing. Jennings has got 10 points. And we just finished the third quarter and we've got a tight ball game. We've got a great game on our hands as we welcome you back to fourth quarter of action getting started. And let's get your take, guys, on the scoring breakdown for the Pistons. How about the three-point shooting we're seeing so far, guys? Amazing. <laughs> Another thing they've done tonight well is share the ball. So oh, many my of the God. points have come off of um, good crisp passes. Harden out on the wing with Garcia. Yeah. Yeah. Casper's out there with Greg Smith. And it's Beverly, and it's the point guard. And that's who's on the floor for the Rockets. Deflects the pass. From the dishes to you with them. And the rejection by Smith. Here's Beverly. He's guarded by Dillis. He takes it to Beverly. This is a guard. Harden right side. Nice again. And Kesky gets the set. And he banks in the lane. Smith's got the fourth quarter going with the first pass in the period here for the Rockets. Now Phillips. Feeds it to Jennings. The kick out to Phillips. Three pointer. But then recovers. The Rockets have gone one of three from the field to start the fourth quarter. Here's Kesby. Gets the front of the rim and out. Well, you can see why the defense is willing to let him take that shot. That's really not his range. Back to Singler. Suck. Guys, we have seen them with a lot of good ball movement. Well, you like the smooth operating they're showing you here. I mean, things are clicking, and more importantly, it makes them tough to defend. There's no agenda. The ball's just moving to whoever is open. And as a result, they kind of Well, that's inexcusable to throw a pass that far off the mark. And the Pistons making a change here. Detroit, despite how they struggled, did a few good things last year, even though they fell you know, way short of the playoffs. But playing against the Western Conference, playing well against the Western Conference, wasn't one of the things they did well. For the Pistons, Mitchell is just in for Andre Drummond, and it's Caldwell Pope for Chauncey Billups. All right, let's go over to the sideline with Doris Burke. Well, Kevin, head coach of the Pistons, had some words for his team over the break. He told his team to keep looking for three-point opportunities, saying their perimeter defense isn't doing a good job getting out on our shooters. So let's keep firing away until they decide to guard us. As you mentioned, with the Pistons and the West, just a 4-26 record for them, Clark, and with the second worst in the entire league. What the fuck? Only one win better than the Bobcats, who had a league low three in that category. What went wrong there? Well, it was the youth, for sure. They made a lot of mental mistakes. They didn't have that one player who could consistently create his own shot and open up space. That's one of the reasons they went out and got Josh Smith, to try to be that player in that league. That effort and energy as he creates the second chance and then converts. He doesn't just convert, Clark, he converts with max 
maximum force. I think people get lessons of the art of offensive rebound. Smith with the block. And then it's good off the glass. And the Rockets lead by six. Sweet. They lead they're enjoying here, and they deserve it with all the work they put in on the bike. Yeah, big margin for them in the rebounding department. They completely dominated the boards here. Brooks, the best of Brewer. The feet to Smith. And it is just down with a nice jam. when you give up easy points in the game. That, that's inexcusable. So that, that's the reason for this timeout. It really came down to the fact they were getting beat inside. And that's why the coach called timeout. They were not winning the battle inside. For the Pistons, Andre Drummond comes in for Mitchell. I mean, Stucky subbed in for Caldwell Pope. Stucky dishes to Monroe. Shot to stop the run. Hey, you want to grab the ball again? There you go. Second shot opportunity. Drummond. And the bucket counts. He's on his way to the free throw line. Trying to make it a three-point play. That's really told the story today, guys. I mean, throughout this game, they've been able to get the ball in tight and then finish. Yeah, Clark, they've been more active and more physical down low. And I think that's been the difference. Here's Cooler. And now we can see them really working to that side. Taking advantage of the defense, really pounding it down low. Jennings with the bucket. That's his second three-point of the half and his third overall. Brooks kicks to Garcia. Back to Brooks. Brooks, left side. Passes it to Matias. Rebound to Troy. Well, I think sort of just playing this one out now as they get the last rebound. They really haven't had much success today controlling the missed shot. Outside Jennings. Launches a three. They get a pass.
time to say so long. Report now on speed curve.